Well, guys, we are back for another episode of the Liberal Asshole Show, episode 57. So, what are today's topics? Uh, Biden doing a little bit of student debt relief. Republican wants to stone gays. Gay conservatives being silly. Laura Luna being a Karen. Adelaide Holocaust Museum targeted by neo-Nazis. Sean Hannity slash Dr. Carlson being kicked from Fox News. And Matt Walsh slash libs of TikTok lead to violence to LGBT. All right, so I guess we start with the first topic, as we've been covering for several months now, and you didn't think it was going to happen at all. Well, it did actually happen. Biden has canceled ten thousand dollars in stu student loan debt for for a whole bunch of the country. It was like I cut my cow covered. I think it was like up to at least forty percent of Americans got relief. Nice, which is huge. All right, he actually did it. Good on him, I guess. Yep. Biden actually doing something good, and conservatives are actually absolutely mauling over oh, him and a giant meltdown, and it's so fucking oh, funny what? because Biden actually doing something good. Conservatives have to have a meltdown as always, of course. and of course, this is neat. If anything, this doesn't go far enough. He shouldn't have done ten thousand dollars. He should have done all of it. Like student mm. debt is well over a trillion dollars in debt. That you can't yeah. go bankruptcy over and it stifles the Oop. economy. This is a thing. This, this is something that does not happen in most other countries because college is free, just like schools in America, pretty much up to high school. College and university yeah. should be too. So let's watch Kyle covering it now. Okay, so let's look at the specifics here. They say President Joe Biden on Wednesday is set to announce his long delayed move to forgive up to $10,000 in federal student loans for many Americans and extend a pause on payments to January, according to three people familiar with the plan. Biden has faced pressure from liberals to provide broader relief to hard hit borrowers and from moderates and Republicans questioning the fairness of any widespread forgiveness. The delay in Biden's decision has only heightened the anticipation for what his own aides exactly. acknowledge represents a political no win situation. All right, now let me pause there for a second. Not true. I think this is DC insider brain rot right here. This is nothing but positive. It's not a no win situation. Yep. They are convinced it is a no-win situation because of the dialogue in elite circles. But when you go ask regular Americans or people who are struggling with their student loan payments, they'll tell you immediately, like, no, this is glorious. This is wonderful. I love this. We need this. So just, just the framing like 40 here, of I find, from just 10, uh, you know, alone. not good. Yeah. I don't think the framing is good. Okay. So now the other thing is at – up until the last minute, we have reports from Jeff Stein of the Washington Post, who is actually a phenomenal reporter. He's one of the few people inside these like traditional media outlets who you should actually trust because he has a track record of great reporting. Um, he says that behind the scenes, Chuck Schumer was pressing Biden to increase that number of, uh, for the amount of student loan debt forgiveness. Schumer originally was pushing for, I think, $50,000 worth, and I don't know if Which behind be the scenes he's given up on awesome. that. Thing, and there's no way Biden's doing it. would be. I think that would cover probably almost every single person, too. To do it, and yeah. I think pushing for 25 or something like that. Or maybe he is still pushing for 50. I don't know, but Based the report is once, that there are to say. people behind mm -hmm. the scenes who are saying, yeah, now nah, you got to go further, you got to do more than this. But it looks like Biden has, uh, you know, settled in on $10,000 of student loan debt elimination and then continuing the pause so that at least as of right now, nobody has to, has to continue paying it. So where was I in this? They say, the delay in Biden's decision has only heightened the anticipation for what his own aides acknowledge represents a political no-win situation. I told you I don't buy that. The people spoke on the condition of anonymity to discuss Biden's intended announcement ahead of time. The precise details of Biden's plan which will include an income cap limiting the forgiveness to only those earning less than $125,000 a year, were being kept to an unusually small circle within the Biden administration and were still not finalized on the eve of the announcement. So they're making last minute changes before they announce it. Down to the wire decision making has been a hallmark of the Biden White House, but the particular delay on student loans reflects the vexing challenge confronting him in fulfilling a key campaign promise. Again, this is such like insider DC brain rot in this article. I mean, it's just oozing with it. The plan would likely eliminate yeah. student debt entirely for millions of Americans and wipe away at least half a million more. I think they end up giving specific numbers on that here. The nation's federal student debt now tops $1.6 trillion 
after ballooning for years. Uh, More than 43 million Americans have federal student debt. That's amazing. 43 million Americans have federal student debt, with almost a third owing less than $10,000 and more than half owing less than $20,000, according to the latest federal data. See, that's interesting because in all seriousness, that's a bigger chunk than I thought that would be impacted by this in, in a very good way. I, I honestly thought that the numbers were, were much higher than that, and I was wrong. So basically, you're going to have total student loan debt elimination for about 33% of people who have student loan debt. Yeah. And um, ten thousand dollars got rid of a third of debt, half of just like uh, the student loan debt. Just imagine, yeah. over, just imagine over if it went fifty percent. Probably, like I said, so, I mean, that, look, that's that's yeah, something. Yeah, that'd be I'll, awesome. Uh, you guys know I'll get to my rant on this in a second. More. Um, what the left position mm -hmm. on this should be? Should have gone for all of it. Analyze it. Right, hey, it's a start. Of what you call a normie so American. Give it a but considering that I wasn't but expecting him to give any of it, the continuation of the pandemic era payment freeze comes just days before millions of Americans were set to find out when their next student loan bills will be due. This is the closest the administration has come to hitting the end of the payment freeze extension, with the current pause set to end August 31st. Wednesday's announcement was set for the White House after Biden returns from vacation in uh, Rehoboth Beach, Delaware, I never heard of that place. The administration had briefly it's considered Rehoboth higher education schools in the president's <laughs> that's only like an hour, for a that's larger like, reveal. Like only 30 minutes from where I'm at. <laughs> Biden was initially skeptical of student loan debt cancellation as he faced off against more progressive Democratic senators Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders, who proposed cancellations of $50,000 or more during the 2020 primaries. How weaselly is that line? We know Bernie wanted full student loan debt elimination. I don't remember Elizabeth Warren's plan, but based on this, I'm guessing that her plan was like $50,000. So, but uh, you see how they like lump it all together there and don't parse out who believed what and what was better? as he tried to shore up support among younger voters and prepare for a general election battle against then-President Donald Trump, Biden uh -huh. unveiled his initial proposal for debt cancellation of $10,000 per borrower with no mention of an income cap. Biden narrowed his campaign promise in recent months by embracing the income limit as soaring inflation took a political toll and as he aimed to head off political attacks that the cancellation would benefit those with higher take-home pay. Uh, so anyway, this article goes on. You get the gist of it. So I made a prediction not too long ago when we were talking about this exact issue. Um, and I said, what Biden is likely to do is either absolutely nothing or the furthest he would go is $10,000 of student loan debt elimination and they means test it and they say only under $125,000 a year. Okay, so it looks like that's exactly what he's gonna do. Now, somebody made a good point on Twitter about this that I wanna uh, bring up to you guys, which is, isn't it funny for whatever reason, when Democrats talk about taxes, they say stuff like, anybody under $400,000 will not get their taxes raised a penny. So their, their perception of a fair means test when it comes to taxes is 400K and under. But then with student loans, all of a sudden that drops to 125K and under. If they're being consistent in their logic, wouldn't they say, no, $400,000 a year and under, all those people will get $10,000 of student loan debt elimination. And they don't. So they change the threshold, and I don't understand why they change the threshold. That doesn't seem to make much sense to me. But I want to give you some more information on this because I think uh, the facts of student loan debt elimination are oftentimes kind of buried, and people need to know the reality on the ground. So this is originally from an NPR article, um, and the gist of it is right here. Forgiving student debt boosts the economy in significant ways. Some of America's top economists say that broad loan forgiveness could raise annual home sales by 300,000 and U.S. real GDP could be increased by 86 billion to 108 billion dollars per year. Think about that, guys. So 108 billion. This I mean, 86 to 108 billion a year just by eliminating some of this debt. Mm. As massive economic benefits, even though now the main line of attack coming from opponents is like, oh, you're going to make inflation so much worse if you do this. Here's another fact. Besides hurting the housing market, besides hurting the housing market and GDP, the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia found a significant negative correlation between student debt and the rate of new small business. So in other words, the more student debt that, that's out there, um, the less small business entrepreneurship is out there. And so 
you know, if you're pro small business, as Republicans always like to claim they are and Democrats like to claim they are, well, you should very clearly be in favor of limiting or eliminating student loan debt. Yeah, the student, I mean, all the um, student loans are just a hindrance to the economy. Like, they just need. They yeah. Got... So, I have more numbers on this. We're going to get to them later on in the show because I have CNN shitting all over student loan debt elimination. But. Because, uh, because, uh, and case, I can tell you exactly why. Because CNN crazy. loves loves killing and oppressing workers and they love student loan debt because then they can kill people with it and make a whole bunch of money off of them too oh i don't know if this is a great idea right now um but look from a left-wing perspective you look at this and you just want to pride but pride pride prod bought biden i don't know why that's so hard to say prod biden i was gonna say like pride bought Prod Biden, dog, you got to do more, man. You got to do more. I mean, this is something that can help just take a giant burden off a generation that has consistently been behind the eight ball. And, you know, Bernie Sanders campaigned on eliminating student loan debt. There were times where Biden had indicated, I'm going to fully eliminate it. There were other times he embraced that 50K number. And then that kept going down and down, and now we're at ten thousand dollars of student debt elimination under one hundred twenty thousand dollars. I was expecting it to be but zero. This is something that would substantively, materially, and overnight improve the lives of millions and millions and millions of people. And Biden has the authority to do it on his own. It's one of you know some things. Maybe there's a list of ten things or twenty things that Biden can do on his own that he doesn't need Congress for. So Republican obstruction is not an issue here. And he's splitting the difference and, uh, you know, sort of doing the the middle path. He's doing the, you know, the, the centristy thing, the moderate thing. And I think it's a, it's a lack of imagination on his part. And um, this is something that would massively help boost his own poll numbers. So even if he just cares about, like, saving his own political ass moving forwards for 2024... Well, look, there's an easy out here. There's an easy out here. And so I think it's incumbent on, upon everybody on the left to continue to push Biden and say, hey, man, this isn't enough. This isn't good enough. Um, because really, from a principled perspective, I don't think student loan debt should be a thing. I don't think it yeah, should guys, exist. This is and something most mm -hmm. other advanced countries in the world, this doesn't exist. This is pretty much just an American exclusive thing. And should not exist. And I really don't think that's a radical position. I think of higher education the exact same way I think of like public high school in this country. When you go to public high school, you just go. It's paid for by taxes. And you don't accrue any debt. It just is what it is. And, you know, it, people use that as a springboard to go on to, you know, higher education or to go out there into the job market. And now we're at the point where a college education is equal to what a high school education used to be equal to. So people sort of need higher education in order to, you know, do well in this economy. And unfortunately, we we shackle people up with debt and hold them back massively. Yep. And so of from a principal perspective, I don't think student loan debt should exist. And I think higher education should be free. And I genuinely don't think that's too much to ask, given the fact that we have spent seven trillion dollars on unnecessary wars of aggression in the middle east for example we bailed out wall street to the tune of trillions of dollars as well it's just it's simply a matter of prioritizing how should we structure our economy what should be considered off the table and a given in a civilized society and so again i think it's incumbent on everybody on the left to you know sort of step up and, and make the point to biden hey man not enough, you got to do more. Now, having said that, I also think you have to be fair and you have to point out, I think this is going to help him in the polls. I think Which among normal did. voters, I think yeah. that uh, he's going to get another <clears throat> bump in the polls. And again, I'm going to get to a story in just a second, what his numbers are right now. He's skyrocketed since his low of 33%. Um, but 
Like at 43% last like this, I checked, that was days weasley, ago. Even though it's the middle path, even though it's the tweaks around the edges, I call him bare minimum Biden now because he's doing the bare minimum across the board. Now, the bare minimum mm -hmm. is better than absolutely nothing, but it is just that, the bare minimum. But this is stuff that I think plays phenomenally well with the American public. I think this is going to materially help enough people that now young people are more likely to turn out in the midterm elections for Democrats, you know, add in Roe versus Wade on top of that. And that's a another thing that will increase Democratic turnout. So both things are true at the same time. The left argument of like, you have to do more. This, this is still, you know, a massive crisis, et cetera. All that is true. But it is also true from the normie perspective. This is going to help Biden and he's going to get another bump in the polls. And I think it's incumbent upon us to be honest about that as well. So anyway, there you have it. Um, as I'm talking to you guys right now, when this is being recorded, all we have are the verifications and the confirmations from the mainstream media outlets that are saying, yes, Biden has settled on this amount of student loan debt elimination. But honestly, by the time that this video and this podcast drops, it's probably going to be one of those breaking news situations where Biden had just announced, like, yes, this, these are the details of my student loan debt plan. And, it was you know, 10,000, and I think there was one that was on a particular thing got 20,000. So in a sense, it's sort of like a breaking news video. But there you have it. Um, Biden at least taking some sort of action on student loans. And um, like I say, a lot better than doing absolutely nothing, but still nowhere near enough. But bare minimum, Biden strikes again. And this will definitely give him uh, some more political clout and higher poll numbers moving forward. Hey, y'all, do me a favor yep, and like absolutely. and Absolutely. So what do you have to say yeah, about that? I was, I'm pleasantly surprised, I shall say. Yep, since you thought he wasn't going to do anything, I wasn't yep. sure. But hey, it's still awesome. It helps so many Americans, although it still has nowhere near enough. He needs to go all the way, of course. And yep. of course, I was hoping cool. Kyle would cover it, but he didn't. I thought that wasn't the case in his videos since I watched before. But oh, my mm -hmm. God. The, the right has had absolute meltdown about it. And yeah, course, I've seen that. Absolutely molding, and I'm loving it. So, yeah, if anyone has seen go watch his videos when I, when I'm Biden did this on Kyle's channel because, oh, it is so funny, the amount of salt yep. that they're spewing. But that's too Literally, the amount, literally, they're just, they're just going, <laughs> on the copium copi. <laughs> They got completely obliterated. So, now, on to the next topic. Republicans want to fuck... A, there's a Republican that wants to go back to modern-day to modern day extremist Islam and stone gays. But I thought it was only the Muslims that did that. Oh, oh no, apparently there's um, Every now and then Christian countries where they do it too. But when I point out, I'm... The um demeaning Christians and apologizing for mu Muslims. Remember, that's because that that's because the only that's because you're apologizing for Muslims if you're not carrying out a white nationalist terror attack in Christchurch. All right, so let's see how homophobic and how far you go. But remember, guys, this is very common with conservatives. This is nothing new, as people keep implying that it is. Every now and then, a story pops up that um, really is just a blast from the past. Like, this article could have been written in, like, the year 1720, right? Like, that's how primitive and retrograde this ideology is and regressive. So this is uh, being reported in LGBTQ Nation, but there's a number of outlets that have um, talked about this as well. GOP candidate says it's, quote, totally just to stone gay people to death. Uh, yeah. 2022. It's 2022. This is what this idiot is saying. So it's a little, the, the timeline Pretty is a little cringe. more complex. Let's dive into that now. So well, here's a right. quote from the dude. Yep. Well, does that make me a homophobe? Yes. Yes, it does. The answer is yes. That, that, okay, that absolutely not. makes you a homophobe. Mm. No if ends, or buts about it. It's How the most obvious question and answer that has ever happened in human history sense. about anything ever. Of course you are. Exactly. The snap answer is yes. It is more of a snap answer than when somebody says, does 2 plus 2 equal 4? This is... Absolutely. It simply makes me a Christian. Christians believe in biblical morality. 
kind of by definition. Or they should. Uh, care to explain uh, the majority? Yep. Of, care to explain the majority? Exactly. Of, care to explain the majority of Christians that don't think gays should be killed? Oh. He's, he's um. He's sounding like he should be in Uganda or oh, yeah. um. Kill the gays, Bill, from years ago. Yep. 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 I love that the, point. And then the what? best Christian country in probably in. Honestly, probably about thirty in about three years to um sentence death sentence death for being gay. Because how many ways do these types of Christians disregard other aspects of biblical morality? Like for example, I don't know if you guys know this. There's a number of passages in the Bible that are just over the top pro immigrant. You're supposed to welcome them into your home and treat them like your brother and your sister. They, I think they refer to them as sojourners in, in the Bible. Yep. And they talk about how, you know, how you treat them, it, how you treat the least, least amongst you, it says the most about you. And so it's just, it's just completely pro-immigrant. That's one aspect of the Bible. Another aspect of the Bible, keep it real, is that Jesus was a socialist before socialists even existed. Homeboy was like a, a hippie bachelor going around teaching pre, uh, teaching peace and love. You know, if Jesus was around in the 60s, he would have been at Woodstock for sure. <laughs> like, I, he's massively anti-rich and pro-poor. The meek shall inherit the earth. A rich person can't get into heaven in the same way that, I don't remember, I'm butchering, I'm paraphrasing here the exact quote, but like, rich person getting through an eye of a needle. I'm, I'm, I fucked that up so bad, but you guys all know the <laughs> the, quote, the quote I'm talking it's about. Thought it's easier for um, a camel to go through the eye of a person, needle than it is for a rich oh, person a to get into heaven. The eye of the needle. Because Jesus was and Jesus is, was a is was like a, a rich person getting into heaven. Hippie. Something to that effect. Forgive me, I'm an idiot. I'm slow. But anyway, um, that's what happens. You don't talk about. There are so many things that they overlook like it when to. it comes to. Biblical morality. Honestly, what they do is they highlight all the worst Always aspects of it. And like, That's the part that I believe in. They, I bet they don't even know that the Bible is pro-choice. The Bible prescribes abortion if your wife cheats on you. As we yeah, that. four years ago. They don't know that at all. The parts they like yep, are like... I the remember that one. Parts. I've got, still got that listed <laughs> and the, on... And the anti-gay parts. The and then they only ignore I parts completely. Like how it's an abomination to eat shellfish. I'm sure this dude has shellfish. A GOP candidate in Oklahoma is getting attention for comments he made several years ago when he justified the death penalty by stoning for gay people. When asked recently about it, he didn't disavow his previous comments. Scott Esk, 56 years old, is running in the Republican primary runoff election tomorrow for a seat in the state house, and local media is bringing up some extreme comments he made in the past. He's not handling them well. In 2013, Esk was commenting in a Facebook conversation about the Pope saying that he couldn't judge gay people. Esk posted some Bible quotations, including the part of Romans 1, where the Bible says that a long list of people who sinned is worthy of death. Worthy of death. Another person asked him, so just to be clear, you think we should execute homosexuals, presumably by stoning? Esk responded, I think we would be totally in the right to do it. Ignoring, as a nation, things that are worthy of death is very remiss. So like his you. point is, it is more moral, it is more ethical to murder gay people. A year later, a journalist asked him about those okay, comments. He okay, said it was jihadists. totally just to kill gay people. What I will tell you right now is that is that was done in the Old Testament under a law that came directly from God, he said at the time. And in that time, <gasps> there was, it was, totally just, totally just came directly from God. I don't, like, what, what are you even saying, bro? What are you saying? By the way, I love how convinced he is that... He happened to be born in the one correct interpretation of the one true religion. Hey, Dippy, there's over 4,000 religions in the world. What makes you think you're so special? How do you know that, whatever, the, the religion of the tribal folks in Madagascar isn't correct? How do you know? You have no idea. You have no idea. Are they right in Papua New Guinea? Are they, is, is Hinduism correct? Is Buddhism correct? Are, are, you know, is, are, is paganism correct? There's over 4,000 religions. He's like, ooh, my mommy and daddy said this one's right, so I think this one's right. <laughs> it's, okay, the lack of intellectual curiosity is insufferable and unbearable to me. This guy goes through life like a total bot, a total NPC, never questioning anything that he heard from his yep. shitty parents. And here we are. 
casually talk. Yeah, killing gay people. That came from God. It's got to be right. And by, by the way, this sounds exactly like Salafi jihadists, the, the most extremist exactly. sect of Islam. After those comments, he put out a long video where he claimed he sets the record straight. In those videos, he claims he has compassion on anybody in the grips of an insidious addiction, such as homosexuality. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Homosexuality is uh, an addiction, but heterosexuality dude, is not. Dude, yeah, it ain't an addiction. It's just your sexuality. If somebody's gay, they're just, just gay. That's what it is. Who you are? That's it's not like you can overcome this if you work really hard. That. That's not the way it works. That's not the way it works. Which, by the way, I hate to be the bad guy here, but how many instances have we seen of you know these televangelists or very famous right wing yes. pastors who are the most vehemently and, and loud anti-gay voices in the country. Yep. And then they get caught sucking somebody's dick. I'm yep. just saying, how often did, th did that happen? Very often. How often did that happen? Yeah. It happened Dozens. all the time. It happened endlessly. It, what's the guy's name? It wasn't, um... It wasn't Hagee. It wasn't Falwell. I'm blanking on the guy's name right now, but he very... In a very high-profile way, he got caught with, like, crystal meth and and a gay hooker. And then, of course, there's the Republican politicians who are anti-gay, like the guy who was caught in the New Jersey Turnpike restroom, tapping his foot on the ground, trying to get a little sucky-sucky going on with whoever was in the stall next to him, probably taking a shit. Come on, dog. What are we talking about here? A lot of these guys are deeply... The way you get this sort of toxicity is, like... They're raised in a super religious environment. They're told that this thing is wrong, but they innately feel that. And so their overcompensation is overreacting in the other direction, harshly judging others who are gay because they think, well, everybody has this urge. I'm just more moral and I can fight it or I'm trying to fight it. So this dude, look, don't look at his search history. Don't look at his search history on his computer. You're going to find some funky stuff. Anyway, no, leak it. Um, see how bad it any is. Any Christian should be in the position to say, this is sin, or this is good. Too. If we don't make that distinction, yeah, how, we're not no, going to help a case of how many viruses does he have. What, what, you think you're helping people <laughs> by stoning them to death? You fucking freak. He said in his first video published in 2015, in another video, which was from earlier this year, Esk called a local TV news report on his comments a hit piece on the fact that I had an opinion against homosexuality. Yes, it's such uh, a hit, hit piece, piece. For people to say, oh, that's crazy, you want to kill gay people. What's not a hit piece is you advocating for murder for people for some immutable characteristic that they can't even control. That is not, what you did is not a hit piece, what they did is a hit piece. Them accurately calling you out for being a psycho is a hit piece in your mind. Okay. Uh, well, does that make me a homophobe? Uh, maybe some people think it does, he said. It no, is. Literally everybody who's it not an extreme homophobe does. knows it does. But as far as, I di as far as I and many of the people, the voters of House District A7 are concerned, it simply makes me a Christian. Christians believe in biblical morality, kind of by definition, or they should. Think gay should be he said that he is not in favor of expanding and the death penalty in Oklahoma for homosexuality. <laughs> he just wants everyone to know that gay people are so offensive to his God and that his religion wants them dead. Quote, The fact is that it's much more offensive knowing what obscene things homosexuals do with each other than it is for somebody to hold the view that it, it is indecent. He's from experience, hey? Oh. Eh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's out. He just outed himself right there. He just outed himself right he there. Said, you think me advocating killing gay people is gross? Think about gay sex. That's even grosser, bro. You know you don't oh have my to God. think of that, right? Oh my God. Yeah. Now that the runoff election is tomorrow, the Oklahoman asked him right ask about Holy those comments shit. to see if his opinion has changed at all. He refused to do an interview and pointed the Oklahoman to the two videos. I've stood up for what is right in the past and I intend to in the future and I am right now. That's got me in trouble. The media are not my friends as far as I'm concerned. Oh my god, this is perfect. This is chef's kiss perfect. See, this is, this is the classic, like, fake populist posture. The argument he's making is, hey man, look, I'm just going to keep it real. I'm just going to tell it like it is. And if the fake news media wants to smear me for it, well, I'm not even going to back down, bro. No, you don't get to take that posture when you're arguing for the murder of innocent people simply because they're gay. The media exactly. is correctly calling you out on this. They are right. But it's it's the whole, it's just the mindless, like, 
well, if I just posture against the establishment, well, then maybe that'll work. I don't think it's going to work when you're advocating for murdering gay people and what? One poll had it like 70% of the country is pro-gay marriage now? What are you talking about? Oh, my God. Earlier today, Esk yeah. posted a video to his YouTube channel entitled, Scott Esk Sets the Record Straight for the Third Time, in which he calls the Oklahoman piece and, and a piece by News 4 hit pieces and says that the media is against him because they want his opponent, Gloria Bannister, to win. Look, they should want your opponent to win because you're a psycho. And this is the stuff that you think about. You want to be an elected stuff, official. G you're not G thinking about G ending believes. poverty. You're not thinking about giving people health care or decent jobs or decent wages or fixing infrastructure or cleaning up the water or building a new park or whatever the fuck it is you do. You're not thinking about any of that stuff. What you're thinking of is murdering gay people and probably blowing your neighbor Fred. Like, that's what you're thinking about, bro. It's, it, and it hit, it's a hit piece. It's Okay, they were accurately quoting you. So you did the hit piece on yourself. They just shined a light on it. He also responded to being fired from his job as a data manager in 2011 because he was arrested after he allegedly threatened and harassed the leadership of his church, of course. In the video, he calls those church leaders too? snakes. Yep. And makes some opaque reference to the divorce and custody battle he was going through. Whoever wins the primary tomorrow will run against... But wait, you can't divorce under Christianity since you're yeah, a exactly. Christian. So you're in defiance with your own religion. Mm -mm, yeah. mm -mm. Tisk, tisk, tisk. The, the seat is currently held by State Representative Colin Walkie, Democrat, who is retiring. Okay, well, there you go. And then they have the actual, these are the actual, um, you know, Facebook posts or whatever that started this whole thing. There you have it, man. Look, I, okay, the reason I'm covering this story is that people need to understand the spectrum of actual belief among the far right politicians because they are. Gonzo, they're 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 out of this world in terms of the things they actually think, the things they actually believe. Think about the fact yeah. that 157 House Republicans just voted against gay marriage like last month. 157, Which 195 disgusting. voted against a right to contraception. Absolutely, yep. 195. And a one too. This, I'm not even being facetious here. Yep. But I can tell you now, there'd probably be about 80, I reckon, that would vote against a um, bill to codify interracial marriage. No surprise. Vote against interracial Probably a similar marriage number for up. things like the like, voting hey, rights and civil rights act, which I reckon still constitutionally protected. if gay marriage and contraception were to go, um, I reckon next would probably be interracial marriage and the voting rights act. We think the Supreme Court might throw it out. So here's a bill to protect the right to interracially marry. marry. My guess is you get at least 60 or 70 Republicans who are like, yeah, I'm, I'm against that. Same with the because Voting Rights Act and the Civil the Rights Act. Never because went there's away. probably about 50, I reckon, that want to go all the way back to slavery. And when it became politically inconvenient for them, and they couldn't talk about it anymore, they had to change up their focus and their tactics and the stuff they say. But the shit is right underneath the surface, dog. It's still there. Because it's 2022, and this psycho is talking about it's just to stone gay people to death. So... That's the kind of extremism that we're talking about here. And, hey, believe you me, I'm a strong critic of the Democrats, and I will point out every single flaw they have because that's called intellectual honesty. But you also need this thing called context and perspective. And yep. uh, I think something people this like really, Jimmy really provides some of that. If lost. you want to see me and Crystal yep. Ball interview so legends yeah. like Noam Chomsky... What do you guys say about that? Now, of course, I want not people... Not surprised... And of course, we need to remind everyone this is not like a new thing. This is a very common thing among conservatives and homophobic religious fundamentalists. This is not new. Absolutely disgusting, mm -hmm. but not surprising either. So I think that we should way. keep the um anti the anti gay crap going. So I think we should talk about the last thing on this list that I put up here earlier. Matt Walsh Matt lives Walsh a TikTok, lives lead TikTok, to TikTok violence. leading to violence against LGBT being stochastic terrorists. Oh my god, here we go again with more homophobic transphobia and all that crap. It's absolutely disgusting. Yeah. Children's hospitals across the country have been receiving harassment and even threats of violence after right-wing propagandists have been fear-mongering about the gender-affirming care that said children's hospitals provide to trans youth. Now, that resulted a couple of weeks ago in this. 
This is an August 17th headline from Vice. Far-right extremists are threatening to execute doctors at a children's hospital. The viral Twitter account lips of TikTok promoted a lie about gender-affirming care at the hospital, and now doctors are getting death threats. Now, libs of TikTok was temporarily suspended from Twitter for doing just that, and they didn't just target Boston Children's Hospital, they targeted multiple hospitals. But even exactly. after being suspended, as Media Matters reports, the owner of the libs of TikTok account, Chaya Rychik, is vowing to continue targeting hospitals after her suspension. And I don't know about you, but even though I'm pretty much in the free speech absolutist camp, this is something that, that honestly should lead to you getting taken off of social media. You're literally, yeah. you're advocating I don't know about outright advocating violence, but you're doing stuff that is definitely leading to threats of violence, and that is no. Yeah. As a free speech absolutist, what about you? I'd say, yeah, that's not a um, it's not um, okay. That's something that should be restricted. Yep, and that's hard to say as free speech absolutist, but there are lines, and this is definitely one of them is over. Now, even though the libs of TikTok account specifically instigated all of this and started this campaign, Chaya Rychik did not act alone because right-wing propagandist Matt Walsh also joined in and directly incited harassment against the Boston Children's Hospital. Here's a clip that we played on the program from a couple of weeks ago uh, from Media Matters, where he says that they need to take action against the Boston Children's Hospital, followed by what happened just a couple of days later after he made those claims. Children's hospitals around the country are butchering, mutilating, and sterilizing their young patients. According to Boston no. Children's Hospital, That's literally that, every man. toddler who has ever been born or will ever be born is trans. Now, if it seems like they're casting the widest imaginable net in order to catch the most children they can and well, put them all in a path to sterilization here. and butchery before they can even talk, well, that's because Butchering. that's exactly what these monsters are doing. Of course. Uh, and they've done uh, it up until this point without They're much monsters. resistance from the public. Yep. Even one transgender end. person exists. We have to stop making that, it so That easy. means every single child is having their genitals the ripped off and shoved up their anuses. A national coordinated effort to fight back against this evil. You know, it's really just a matter of where do we begin. Maybe we begin at Boston Children's Hospital. Boston Children's Hospital says its staff is being threatened and harassed now after far-right activists later, on social Matt media Wolf posted said. misinformation. Yeah claiming they perform gender-affirming hysterectomy procedures on young girls. The hospital says it's Guys, not they don't do, like, actual, like, sex change operation, like the physical, the actual surgery until you're an adult. Like, exactly. Like, here's... How many times we gotta keep talking about This is how it usually is. Until, like, puberty, it's usually, like, um, so, so, social... Um, yeah, social acceptance. Like, they recognize you for what you are, let you do what you want. Then when you go into puberty, then they start doing maybe, like, puberty blockers and stuff like that. Which, there's really no negative side effects, and they can be canceled just like that. And then finally, when they're 18, that's when they can finally do the actual sex change operation. Like, there is no sex change operation being done on kids. It's just transphobic lies true they do not exactly. perform those procedures for anyone under the age of 18. boston children hospital says it is proud though to be home to the first pediatric and adolescent transgender health program in the united Which states is a big w the hospital though now is working with law enforcement to try to better protect its staff in the face of these lies so this is very clearly stochastic terrorism and it hasn't yep. stopped after doctors received death threats they haven't stopped targeting doctors individually or different children's hospitals. And now it's all culminated in this. On August 30th, police set up a perimeter around Boston Children's Hospital after a bomb threat was called in. The building had to be sweeped, according to NBC10 Boston. Now for additional details, NBC News reports, the hospital said it is working with law enforcement and outside experts after it received the anonymous bomb threat and it moved quickly to protect patients and employees. Quote, we are relieved no bomb was found and that employees and patients are safe, it said. We remain vigilant in our efforts to battle the spread of false information about the hospital and our care caregivers. We are committed to ensuring the hospital is a safe and secure place for all who work here and come here. We will provide additional information as we are able. The Boston Police Department said it sent in a bomb squad to the Children's Medical Center at about 8.14 p.m., but no suspicious items were recovered or located. Quote, it's still an active investigation, Detective John Boyle said by phone Wednesday morning.
Now, thankfully, the bomb threat turned out to be false. But it's not like no harm was done. And one story in particular illustrates how harmful this was. So one woman named Patricia MacArthur Doval, she was forced to leave the hospital while they were doing the bomb sweep. And she explains how she was really scared because she had to leave her baby in the newborn intensive care unit. Couldn't take the baby out. So ask yourself this question, how many surgeries were disrupted? How many parents had to leave their children in their hospital rooms because they couldn't be disconnected from life-saving machines? How much harm exactly. did this actually cause? Also, from a pro-cop perspective, for all you conservatives, can you imagine how much time wasted for the cops to do that when they could be doing other exactly. more important things? Because remember, false reports like that is a crime too. Mm. Pro-crime, I see because right-wing propagandists like Lips of TikTok and Matt Walsh worked their supporters into a frenzy thinking that this hospital was actually doing harm to children. No, actually, they're helping children. That's what they're there to do. Exactly. And now, not only are you stoking harassment and violence against the hospital staff, but you're disrupting procedures, separating parents from their children. So you might ask yourself, well, is Matt Walsh going to come out and say, all right, this has gone too far. I understand that we're all concerned, but perhaps the best way to carry out our anti-trans agenda isn't necessarily targeting literal children's hospitals. No, well, he's like, no, hey, that's not what he's saying. In fact, he is demanding an apology from the left for daring to blame <laughs> him for the violence that he uh, stoked yes. against the Boston it's Children's Hospital. He writes via Twitter, violence. last night, thousands of idiot leftists were absurdly blaming me and lips of TikTok for a bomb threat at Boston Children's. Today, the story has disappeared because police quickly determined the whole thing was a false alarm. I don't expect we'll get any apologies, though. Hang on a second. Oh, shut up. You inspired a bomb threat. Fake or real, either way, that's harassment. Calling in a bomb threat is a form of terrorism. But yet, because there was no bomb that was found, you're expecting other people to apologize to you? I mean, he's deranged. Oh, Matt Walsh is actually deranged. He continues, I would like to know what false alarm means exactly. Police are being coy about it. That's because it's an ongoing investigation, you fucking dipshit. Plenty of reason to wonder whether I false alarm really I means a leftist you, hoax. Of course, scum. certainly lots of precedent for that. If there was really a threat but no bomb, they wouldn't call it a false alarm, and they would still be trying to track down the culprit. Clearing the scene in two hours and calling it a false alarm almost certainly means there was no threat at all, which still leaves questions. I just read more of the details. Police arrived on the scene at 9 20 and had it cleared by 10 p.m 40 minutes becoming increasingly clear there was never any threat so this is what they're always going to do if you're wondering well what will happen if they end up getting somebody killed because of their rhetoric they well they're just going to either claim it was a false flag or blame the left they will never take responsibility for their stochastic terrorism it it's shocking to me that he has this surprised pikachu face after for weeks helping to spearhead this campaign against children's hospitals. And we're not just talking about individual hospitals. Like Matt Walsh has been sharing the names of doctors and their pictures, saying that they're butchering tra trans children. It's genuinely stochastic terrorism. And now that somebody called in a bomb threat to further harass and intimidate the hospital because it was a false alarm, well, he's claiming that, you know, no harm was done here. Except I just told you the harm that was done. Even if it was a false alarm, that disrupted operations at this hospital, which is trying to save children's lives, treat cancer patients, do surgeries on children. And because you have an agenda to push and you want to monetize transphobia, you're making it seem as if this hospital is a danger to children when the opposite is true. And now, when things escalate even further because of your rhetoric, you're claiming that an apology is owed to you. No, you owe the hospital staff an apology but he's not going to give that. So this hospital staff at this point has been terrorized by Matt Walsh and libs of TikTok to the point where I think they can demonstrate real harm. They can actually try to go for defamation. And, you know, look, we saw what happened with Alex Jones and the Sandy Hook situation. The parents sued rightfully so for defamation because there was real harm done there. He claimed that that was a false flag. The parents had to move. They faced death threats and harassment. And now we're seeing that play out again, albeit with children's hospitals where their operations are being 
paused so the police can do bomb sweeps because presumably their supporters are the ones who are calling in threats after they've stoked the flames here. So look, I wouldn't blame Boston Children's Hospital or any of these other hospitals if they actually did want to take legal action against Matt Walsh mm -hmm. and libs of TikTok. Them. So perhaps what he's saying here by downplaying it and denying it, maybe that's him just trying to defend himself legally. But either way, legal or not legal, this is unethical and disgusting, but they will not stop even if somebody gets seriously hurt. They don't care. Like Matt Walsh is trying to emulate uh, Bill O'Reilly's Tiller Tiller the Baby Killer uh, propaganda that led to an yep. abortion doctor yep. being murdered. He's trying to do that, albeit with a doctor that provides exactly. gender from yeah, the he's trying to get the Boston Children's Hospital shot up, shot up, which is what, which, and he would celebrate when that if slash when that happens. Yeah, guys, this rhetoric just needs to stop. There's nothing wrong with the tr being trans or anything related to the LGBT community. Drop your religious fundamentalist crap and get with the times. Character trans youth. It's genuinely Before a sickening have, campaign. And Bill these people are again. absolutely ruthless and morally bankrupt. Don't listen to them when they say that they care about children after their supporters are disrupting the services of hospitals that save children's lives. If you're pro-kids, you actually support the hospital. But of course, we know conservatives do not care about kids whatsoever. So yeah, what do you have to say about that? Ah, it's not surprising. It's Matt Walsh. This is stochastic terrorism and such. Ugh, bloody hell. And if anything happens violent-wise to this hospital or anyone else, you got really no one else to blame but idiots like the oh, Matt Walsh Mr. and Libs of TikTok. And yeah. they have no way to get out of it. Exactly. So now, so now let's continue on with more stupid um, anti-LGB crap. Hey, let's go look at Rave Dubin. Hey, it's been a while since yeah, we heard of you. Rave Dubin. So guys, remember when, um, remember when Uncle Tommy Sodomizer had a meltdown because he found out Dave yes. Rubin was gay? Yes. And speaking of which, guys, <laughs> this is a perfect time to mention Rave Dubin right now because that's what this video is about. So we just yeah. covered two videos. Republican politician once is okay with stoning gays. And then we have Matt Walsh and Libs of TikTok lead into violence against a hospital. Now, what if I told you Rave Dubin literally says and thinks that conservatives are more pro-gay than leftists? <laughs> After hearing all the two videos we just watched, guys, you really think that the, that conservatives are more pro-gay? Oh, let's watch the silliness from this one. All right, everybody, welcome to the show. It is... Set in earlier and earlier That's spring just... again, so yeah, I I don't like it, dog. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm a spring guy. I'm a summer guy, and that's it. I don't like the fall. I don't like the winter. I'm not digging well, you're it. You're a pussy, uh, Kyle. You know, I, I'm curious yeah. how many of you guys but out there. Seriously, agree. whoever edits Kyle's videos needs to do a better job. Just get straight to the point, anyway, like you used fuck to. September, Kyle. but here we are, September first. But I do have a glorious and wonderful and lovely show for all of you. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into that shortly. I got Dave Rubin, who is further embarrassing himself Kyle, on a daily basis, correct, um, trying to play patty cakes with conservatives yep. who quite literally despise him and don't want him to be able to be himself and oh, have equal rights. agree with um, that. And Coulter drops that yeah. hammer on Donald Trump and is like, look, he's done, he's toast, he's useless. Look, she goes so far, I don't even know if I agree with her. But it is kind of a funny dynamic, right? Because I remember from when I was younger, Ann Coulter defended George W. Bush and Dick Cheney in the most extreme fashion you could ever imagine. I mean, she was like the biggest war criminal apologist and torture apologist on the planet. She was hardcore team Republican. And she was with Trump for a hot minute. She wrote a book called In Trump We Trust. And then out of nowhere, it was just, she flipped on him. And so now she's uh, officially declaring that he's done. I also have a really big story about how this- <laughs> Getting at born, get to the topic already. Also in what she says jump into it so dave rubin has been um i guess you could say on the warpath now for at least a year where the the main thrust of every argument he makes is like liberals are really bad bro or you know sometimes leftists are really bad i don't think he makes a distinction between liberals and leftists but hey, you know, Ray, he just thinks the whole left side of the political spectrum from center left all the way to far left that you're all gonna be a dad terrible bad yes i remember that i find it funny that the people who remember stress the most like Let's have um, honest discourse with people who disagree with us, because that's the only way you see what you, you? Of ideas. They talk this big game about, like, 
hear everybody out, bro. And then when it comes down to it, all they do is shit on the left relentlessly, endlessly, and, yeah. you know, castigate them all as evil and and with bad intentions and they're dishonest, etc. Anyway, I digress from that point. So he goes to talk to uh, the noted intellectual and philosopher and deep thinker Candace Owens. And um, look at what he says. She's the big GP. About his experience she's with conservatives. The, and then we'll, we'll break it down. She's the people. one who um, said that the only problem she had with Hitler was that he wanted to take his <laughs> ambitions for Germany global. And then played the race card when that um, was, oh, uh, was thrown back in her. That was awesome. I would say this. Yeah. I like conservatives. I like yeah. hanging out with conservatives. I like debating conservatives. I debating them? When was the last time you debated a conservative? I never find a rude conservative. It's almost impossible really? to find. I mean, you the one fucking conservative is rude, including you, Rave Dubin. I'm pretty sure all the conservatives we just covered today were pretty rude. Literally advocating violence, in too. General, uh, conservatives in general are rude. That's kind of the ideology, part of the ideology of conservatives is to be it's rude, like, to be rude pieces of shit to people you don't like. Like you agree with them on where have I said that so before? Oh yeah, Stalinists. I get nothing but love from conservatives. I spoke, you know this. Mm, I spoke at Liberty remember University, when you the revealed largest you're have kids? Yeah, because you're the uh, uncle Christian, Tom of gay Christian people. College in America. I spoke in front of fourteen thousand people. You've done the exact same gig. These people know my views. They know I'm married to a man. I got a standing ovation. They couldn't have been nicer. I wandered around campus for a couple hours. People coming up to me saying all sorts of nice things. By the way, some people did come up to me and say, you know, I'm... Okay, the reason why the people at Liberty University love you and the reason why they invited you is because it's a very unique thing that politically helps them when you have a gay guy who says, by the way, you're right about everything, including your views on... Exactly. Gay that's including why including you. murdering gay people for being gay. Idea. Now, now, pari- now please that, murder me because I'm that hell, that hell um, self-loathing. That objective fact that if you were a gay person and you were arguing for very pro-gay positions and you were arguing for left-of-center ideas, well, then they wouldn't invite you. You. They invited you. I think you're a communist Nazi who's also an ISIS fighter and you want to rape uh, kids. A token gay person who agrees all the time with conservatives. They like that. Yeah. They like it when they can say, look, even this gay guy is with us. Hello, yeah. obviously we're right. The token we're gay Dave Rubin. Let's the token trans Blair White. Uh, oh, the token come black up to me and say, you know, I'm praying for you. Owens. I don't know if they meant and that. I'm, I'm praying for you, meaning I'm trying to pray the gay way or I'm just <laughs> praying like your continued success or whatever. Yeah, what, what do you think it was, Dave? What do you think the I'm praying for you thing meant? What do you think? Out of curiosity. You're at Liberty University. What do you think? Take, take, take a shot. There is no doubt that it meant I'm praying for you because I think you're a sinner and I think homosexuality is wrong and so I'm praying for you to see the light and get out of that. And I think that they think it's possible with, with Dave because he's such a staunch right winger in every other respect. So they think like maybe he will have an enlightenment moment and get out of this sinful lifestyle. That's definitely what it is. So it's condescending. It's pedantic. It's, look, we know the truth. We see the light. We know the way. You don't. I'm going to try to get you to where I'm at. Jesus, he's so sad. But it would almost be irrelevant to me. Even not if so gay. It's not saying the gay away. Mm-hmm. That's not offensive. If they're not saying... I think the only, I'm going to say it right now. The only reason he oh, hasn't um, deconvert, hasn't um, come out as straight is because that completely failed for Milo Yiannopoulos. <laughs> the word offensive. What is the argument that they're making? What, what, what are they really saying to you? They're saying if you're gay, you are less than. You are not equal to. This is not okay. This is not, this is not just. This is not moral. This is not ethical. You are inferior, in a sense. And so I'm trying to get you... And they want to, to murder you. ...become normal or become superior to all these people who are sinful and who are going to hell. To say that that's not offensive. To say that... That's not condescending. I, it's astonishing. It's the height of arrogance for them to say something like that. And it is, look, it's deeply homophobic for them to say something like that. But he doesn't care. He doesn't see it that way. Oh, it's just so nice. He doesn't care that, because uh, you know, he's a self-loathing guy. It's so much nicer than a, a left winger who says, Dave, you're factually you're wrong about this policy and that policy and that policy. Exactly. You're also a gr- he's also a grifter. Values and principles and beliefs. And the right winger is 
condescending and arrogantly looking down on you and trying to change the essence of who you are, which, by the way, isn't even fucking possible. I'm going to, you know, come me over the head. Over the head. Yeah. We're going to put you, put you somewhere you shouldn't be. I'm, yeah. pray, I'm praying for you. And by like, bro, they're not killing me. They're not even stoning me to death, bro. What's the problem here? If they they're have being the way so they nice would. about it. They're being so nice about exactly. it. Exactly. If they had the way they would stone you to death. Thanks, Dave. Anyway, okay, I can so deal with that. Probably won't write you too. with a smile on their face and says a bunch of nice things and then says, and I'm praying for you. Right. That's actually a lot That's nicer nice. than, than a progressive who will scream all day how much they love gay people and then will unleash endless hate on me because I it's not hate. It's telling you you're wrong about stuff. It is an argument. And you're like, a self-loathing grifter. And like it was pointed out earlier, when they say they pray for you, they're not doing it in a positive way. They're doing it so... You're they're praying saying that you'll come out as straight. Yeah. It is a disagreement. It is a debate. Now, what happened to, bro, I'm all about ideas. I, I'm all about debating in the marketplace of ideas. No, Dave. His brain is in perpetual like recovery mode from taking in so many high level about how right they are yep. about everything. Yeah. That's what you like to do. Yep. So you like the silo. That's what you like. I don't bow to that. So, you know, this is where... It's not about bowing. It's about you being wrong about shit. That's what it's about. It's about the debate. It's about the disagreement. It's about the Absolutely. policy issues. This idea of tolerance and all of these things, I think, I think broadly... He's going to talk about tolerance when he's bringing up the issue of a Liberty University student who's super religious saying, I'm praying for you and looking down on you. That is not tolerant. That is not tolerant. That's saying you're less than and I hope you get out of this, this thing you do, which is inferior, which is bad, which is immoral, and which is unethical. Dave, being gay is not bad, inferior, immoral, unethical. They think it is. I do not. Generally speaking, the left does not. The left is correct. The left is correct. It's because of us. Because we have done a really nice job in the last couple of years of cleaning up whatever those bad parts are. This is bullshit and he knows it's bullshit. When Dave announced I'm having kids with my husband, there was a, a tsunami of right wing hate and right wing disagreement with him. Where you had yeah, and, uh, and, a, and, and millions of people calling him a child wrong. rapist and saying they were going to murder him and his kids. Mildly okay with Literally. what he was doing. And we I covered mean mildly. This months ago, everybody. Like, like, we like, did. Were like, yeah, what you're doing is wrong, but I'll and allow you to do it. Like, you know oh, God. Yeah, it was Milo, too. I think he um said something along the lines of hope, that he hopes they kill themselves or something like that, remember? Yeah. Yep. Well, remember that um, Milo Yiannopoulos came out as straight and underwent so-called gay conversion therapy and it completely destroyed his what career he had but remember it's the conservatives that are the pro-gay side remember everybody the point is that uh yeah, conservatives no. still often i think should take the libertarian approach on it be okay with a state-by-state Situation, but there's still no, when it comes words, to gay rights. No. Like, like, right there won't even be there'll be states being... where black people will be literally slaves. Rave Dubin, like right now with Roe v. Wade being overruled. See what states' rights gives you? So many states yep. have made North, restricted yeah, abortion. Car yeah, remember that um, North Carolina is planning a bill to not only completely outlaw abortion in all cases, but to legalize murdering women and women who are seeking abortions. Like when it comes to Stuff like this, no other state should have no say in it other than to make it legal. That's why it needs to be mm -hmm. state, that's why it needs to be the government all the way for this situation. As a constitutional right under equal protection under the law. So he's not for gay marriage being being allowed in all the states. He's for it being allowed in only the states that want to allow it, which means about half the states would not allow it. Which means gay couples who live in Mississippi, well, fuck off, that's your own problem. So Dave Rubin is against yeah, a right to gay marriage. Yeah. Mississippi now, would probably the outlaw interracial marriage. In there and say, no, I'm for gay marriage. But you just said you wanted the states to decide. If you want the states to decide, it 100% logically follows that not every state is going to have it. It's the exact same thing um, with, with uh, the right to choose. If you say, hey, let the states decide, well, what happened? Like 25 states were like, we're not going to allow it at all. Hell, with the so Voting Rights and Civil Rights like Act, too. Country, which affects millions of people in the same way this gay marriage proposal would affect millions of people. So Dave Rubin is not for the right to gay marry, and he's gay married. And you wonder why. Why did Liberty University invite you to talk? Gee, I wonder why. Could it be because you want to take away the right to gay marry from, like, half the fucking country? Could that be it? 
or yeah, a certain layer of conservatives and, and that take away the sort of right to interracial marry yeah. about yeah. a third and of the country. Society saying, and by the way, I'm not trying to change those people's opinions. That's the part that yes, I really you are. Want. No, you're not. Why they but you. yeah, you're, you're affirming them, you grifter. You're trying to tell them they're right about everything. What a yeah. surprise. I'm going to tell you. If that, that's I'm it. not here to do change that. Change that, yeah. It's funny. I just want to carve out room on the same side. It's so sad, man. It's so, and he's even now at the point where, when he was talking to Jordan Peterson, he was saying, look, the ideal is heterosexual marriage. That's the ideal, and that's what we're aspiring to. And us gay couples will never get there, but that's the guiding star. This is an argument he made. So Dave talked to somebody else who brought that same point up to him and said, right, so you admit if you have kids, you want them to be uh, you know, married and straight relationships. And Dave was like, I, I didn't say that. And he's like, no, well, no, you said if it's the ideal, that means it's better than. If it's better than that means the other thing is inferior. It's not as it's not as good. So you're in favor of them being straight, right? And he he twisted himself into an intellectual pretzel and said, No, that's not exactly what I said. It's not it depends on what the definition yeah, is. Yeah, he twisted right. himself he, into a pretzel trying to sad, take in sad high level I, ideas I, honestly, even though his brain is in perpetual recovery doing, mode. You know, it's super obvious to ninety percent of people watching his little tap dance. And that <laughs> is <laughs> astonishing. So Dave be proud of yourself, man. I hope the money's worth it. Hey, y'all, do yep. me a favor and so, like and yep. we gotta say about all that, guys. After all the anti-gay stuff we just heard earlier, Rave Dubin saying, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with me. These guys are better than liberals. Fuck yeah, you. Yeah, I hope the money's stupid. worth getting stoned to death, Dave. All right. Remember that half the country, would, half the states would ban gay marriage, gay marriage, and about a third of the states would ban interracial marriage. All right, so now we've gotten past the um, anti-LGBT stuff. What should we talk about next? Okay, um, let's go on to Laura Loomer being a Karen. All right, so <laughs> Laura Loomer is a deranged far-right cunt who actually ran for Republican um, congressman in one of those in one of the states, and she actually lost, thankfully. In a, in a Republican yeah. primary. But, oh, man, you thought Trump's meltdown when losing to Biden two years ago was bad? Oh, man, Lauren might have actually topped Trump, and that's quite impressive. So let's see that the is... ultimate of ultimate Karens, everybody, because this is Here insane. Here we go. It's Karen time. <laughs> Woo -hoo. shocked the nation. We have further exposed the corruption within our own feckless, cowardly Republican Party. And that is exactly the reason the Republicans why right, we, I decided to run against we. the rhino Republican, Daniel Webster. Do nothing, Daniel Webster. Yeah. That was far-right extremist and grifter Laura Loomer on Tuesday night after her election loss to incumbent Republican Daniel Webster. Now, as you saw there, she uh, said very clearly, she's not conceding. She's claiming that there was fraud and now since Tuesday, things have escalated drastically because now she is simply unilaterally declaring herself the Congresswoman of Florida's 11th Congressional oh, no, no, District. No, no, no. So we'll talk about that go. and speculate. The Republican who you lost to is, so keep coping. How that's gonna work out even though she lost no, and has presented no evidence of fraud, go. but regardless, she did come pretty close and that should horrify everyone. So she got 44.2% of the vote and that really is no small feat for someone this extreme. And I just want you all to let that sink in for a moment. Laura Loomer almost won a GOP primary against an incumbent Republican. That is scary. And is believe it or not, scary. even though this sounds like it's a stretch, she's more extreme than Marjorie Taylor Greene, full stop. There's a lot of overlap there, to be clear, but she absolutely is more explicit in her racist rhetoric. Now, if you don't know who Laura Loomer is, let me give you a little bit of background. This is from Mother Jones. Loomer hasn't served in office before. Instead, she is famous for being a conservative activist and being cartoonishly bigoted. She has a years-long history of raw, unfiltered Islamophobia that possibly reached its zenith when she said after 50 people were killed in a New Zealand mosque that, quote, nobody cares about the Christchurch shooting. I especially don't. I care about my social media accounts and the fact that Americans are being silenced. Loomer was bemoaning those kicked-off websites 
websites like Twitter for being racist. She did not change her rhetoric to make herself more palatable for Congress during the campaign. Loomer recently shared an article that lamented the accelerating of the erasing of America's white history. She's also kept up a public dialogue with Nick Fuentes, a white nationalist who endorsed her. In March, Loomer went on white nationalist Jared Taylor's podcast. Right Wing Watch has documented her saying things like, I'm a really big supporter of the Christian nationalist movement, and I'm going to fight for Christians, I'm going to fight for white people, I'm going to fight for nationalist movements. So we're not talking about dog whistles here, she's saying it loudly. And that is yeah. disturbing that she got 44% of the vote in Florida's 11th congressional district. Now my first introduction to her was when she chained herself, or handcuffed herself rather, to the door of Twitter's headquarters in New York after she was oh, banned, and she was there for hours, and she was trending. So I mean, mission oh, accomplished. God, I, and I mean, like, that. I have a Twitter account. I feel like I would be sad if I didn't have my Twitter account. But I mean, go outside, touch grass, Jesus Christ. Um, but she, <laughs> now she has decided no, that she, she wants to be but a congresswoman. So she ran before and lost. This time she came closer, still lost. But now she's not going down silently. So she is claiming it was stolen from her. And on Tuesday night, to go back to her speech, she worked herself to tears, literally convincing herself that this election was illegally stolen from her. Watch. We are losing our country because of big tech election interference. And I am pleading with the Republican Party to please start taking this issue seriously. Please. Because the American people deserve representation. And that's a. That's why I ran for Congress in 2020. It's why I ran for Congress in 2022, and it's why I'm going to keep fighting for all of you. I'm never going to. I mean, oh, I don't was, know oh, if she so. believes what she's saying. I don't know if she's just saying this to work up the crowd. I don't know if maybe she didn't believe it, but con convinced herself. I don't know what to make of this. But either way, even though this is a little bit humorous, to be honest. This is absolutely devastating to democracy. This is what Republicans going forward are going to do thanks to Donald Trump. It started with him and then Carrie Lake, gubernatorial candidate in Arizona before that election was even called. She, you know, announced that she had won, claimed that there was fraud. She ended up winning, still said that there was fraud and perhaps maybe she like would have Trump won did. by a bigger margin. Yep. You now see other candidates like Laura Loomer claiming fraud. This is just going to be what they do when they lose elections, even when it's against fellow Republicans. And that is damaging to democracy but i can't be too mad at laura loomer here because she's doing some damage to the republican incumbent and now she is explicitly telling her supporters do not vote for him in fact boycott this election if Lower you live in the out? 11th congressional district of florida rules, and you're a republican That's so she wrote this thing. i we do not that. That. and i encourage it. all of my supporters and all of my voters to not support daniel webster and the corrupt establishment rnc and big tech voter fraud machine that is propping his feeble body up and depriving my constituents of the representation they deserve and need i am calling for daniel webster to resign jesus uh because everyone knows Lord. he is beyond unfit to serve he didn't campaign i'm sure he it's true but i also to debate to you too. and it's because his health is worse than joe biden's now Whoa, I do think when dementia joe is not the not the unhealthy one here Whoa, boy that it is wrong for incumbents to never debate their primary opponents but it's not because his health is deteriorating presumably like I, i've seen plenty of uh primaries where democratic incumbents will debate their progressive challengers this is just the thing that incumbents do. I do think that they should be forced to debate their opponents because I believe in democracy, even lunatics like Laura Loomer. So, you know, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I don't blame her for being upset about that. But to claim that there was fraud and he didn't want to debate you because he's dying, <laughs> presumably, I mean, come on. But that's not even the best part because in a lengthy Telegram post, she just straight up declared herself the congresswoman of Florida's 11th congressional district. So she wrote, the congressional seat in Florida's that is 11th a new district level is mine for the taking. Holy and shit. I will be the congresswoman from Florida's 11th district. I actually am the congresswoman in Florida's 11th district. And everyone knows it, sure. Uh, I'm not going anywhere except Washington, D.C. Florida's 11th district is my home, and I'm going to keep fighting for the people here who have zero representation thanks to the feckless GOP establishment and voter fraud. Daniel Webster is illegitimate, and my team and I will work to drive him into 
into the ground every step of the way until he collapses in disgrace or poor health, Jesus Christ, and resigns like he should have many years ago. Now, skipping ahead a couple of paragraphs here. His health is drastically failing. He is demented, looks ill. <laughs> he could barely what speak. He wears a life alert. And... <laughs> And I am willing to bet he doesn't survive before his current term is over or he pulls an early retirement and the good old boys try to handpick another corrupt successor. We will not allow them to get away with that. They think I'm leaving and guess what? I'm not. Now we're going to skip ahead a little bit. It gets even darker, believe it or not. Mm. I will continue to push Daniel Webster to his absolute physical limits till he resigns in disgrace since the GOP establishment wants to prop up zombies with their voter fraud and big tech election interference machine. Now she also says here she's working on a federal racketeering case against Twitter and Facebook. Good luck with that. And she has an army behind her. Now, my question is, why stop at Congresswoman? Like, if you're just going to pretend like you won... Here's the thing, though. Even if you did one, it still wouldn't be guaranteed that you would actually win the election, and you still wouldn't be a congresswoman right. until January 3rd, so... And yeah. you can unilaterally declare yourself congresswoman? Why not declare yourself president? Why not declare yourself the fucking god emperor of the planet? I just don't get what you stop there. Aim higher. I, and look, I want to see what happens, Laura, okay? Let's see if you actually believe this. Show up, claim your desk in Congress, and uh, see what happens when Daniel Webster shows up. Just say, no, I I'm the congresswoman. Bye. Security, escort him out. See who they're going to uh, take out of handcuffs. See what they're going to do when you t you ask security. Okay, pick one. Who's the real one? Me or Daniel Webster? See what they're going to do. I, I just, I, I don't know what, what to say about these people. They're so fucking delusional. So delusional. And, and to be clear, I don't necessarily know if she believes the lies that she's saying, it's really a distinction without a difference because the effect is still the same. And regardless if she believes it or not, her supporters certainly believe it. So some of her supporters have been responding to these fraud allegations um, against Daniel Webster on Twitter, and they are ripping him for fraud. So let me just give you one example here that stood out to me. So in response to Daniel Webster predictably attacking Biden's student loan forgiveness while saying nothing, of course, about tax cuts for the rich or PPP loans that his Republican colleagues took but were uh, forgiven. So one of Loomer's supporters vocalized her frustration saying, rigged, rigged, rigged. I absolutely don't want to live in this nation where my idol, Laura Loomer, is getting robbed. This is absolutely the final straw. My kids are in danger and I won't live in this nation another day. I'm moving to Alaska and finally leaving the USA. Now look, I have no idea what the circumstances are. If your kids are actually in danger, then I, that's horrible. And I hope that, you know, they're safe. Um, that being said, I don't want to be that guy but Alaska is actually a part of the United States. Now, it's so... <laughs> that is just so bad. How do you not that know crazy. that? What, do you think it's still part of Russia? <laughs> oh, Comically <Blake>? idiotic <laughs> that... I actually don't know if this is satirical. Like, that's where we're at, where this is indistinguishable from satire. So that person could be trolling. I mean, saying my idol, Laura Loomer, it feels like maybe this is a troll, but at the same time... Would anyone doubt it if this were indeed a real Laura Loomer supporter? At this point, I have no idea. Like, I genuinely don't know. But it's so preposterous that I have to at least question, is this satirical? Is this person just being ironic? Because this is what we're dealing with here. It's not a stretch to think that her supporters are believing this, considering Donald Trump got so many people right up that they stormed the fucking Capitol. So how is this going to end? Is she going to encourage her supporters to storm Daniel Webster's office? Is she going to just, again, like handcuff herself to his chair? How is this going to end? Like you're declaring yourself the congresswoman of the 11th district of Florida. So how's that going to work out? I, I just don't know. But either way, I damn well will be watching this shit show because uh, I, I like that she's trying to tank Daniel Webster's chances. I think that that's great. Don't love that she's, you know, harming democracy overall, but if she's trying to convince her supporters to boycott this election and help this Republican lose, okay, w. let them fight. I'd be awesome. All right, so You're what do you guys awesome. say about the ultimate Karen and her? <laughs> Laura Luma, dear God. This is a new low even for you, and that's saying something as it's you. 
Seriously. How, how about you follow what your hell? How about you follow your beliefs and go back in the kitchen and make people sandwiches? <laughs> yep. Because that's all you track cons want, but then you don't back up the talk. Alright, so now, next topic is Sean Hannity and Tucker Carlson being kicked from Fox News. Yep, an interesting possibility. Cause Fox News is still facing the means facing a defamation case by um I can't remember their names, but they're the um people yeah. that uh, what oh yeah, Dominion, who did the um voting machines and Fox News, even though they weren't as bad as like other far right news outlets, but they still went along with like the election's rigged, Dominion is owned by like Venezuela and all that dumb stuff. So as I'm pretty sure Dominion already did the one about um to um one News America, whatever that place is called, yep, News Week. News. So yep. I bet that uh, most Thank of you guys American didn't know that a bunch of Fox News personalities were just deposed in an interesting case that we're about to witness unfold. So this is in deadline: Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, and Lou Dobbs to be deposed in Dominion lawsuit against Fox News. So Dominion is one of the uh, voting machine companies, of which there were a zillion conspiracy theories about in the 2020 election. And oh. instead of sitting around and letting people tarnish their name relentlessly and maliciously, they actually took legal action. Now, I think they also went after Dominion and Smartmatic, and like a few of these companies went after, uh, I think, One America News Network, maybe Newsmax as well, and got to the point where there was some sort of a settlement where you had hosts that were on those networks who were spreading the falsehoods had to come out and basically like apologize and say there's no evidence of any of the things that I have said and uh, there's no reason to believe any of these. So they had to do the whole like tail between your legs go out there and apologize to avoid I think we you know, covered that uh, too. this going further yeah. to avoid losing a, a shitload of money and maybe even tanking your own network, right? So anyway, uh, let me give you the specifics on this. Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, and Lou Dobbs are among the current and former Fox News personalities facing depositions in Dominion Voting System's $1.6 billion defamation lawsuit against the network. With a trial on the docket for next April, both sides in the case have been in the midst of discovery, with Janine Pirro and Steve Ducey also among the Fox News figures on Dominion's list for depositions. That's interesting to me. Janine Pirro is a total psycho. Steve Ducey seems to have uh, moved away from the dominant Fox News narratives recently. In fact, he seems to be sort of pro the FBI going after Trump, which is an interesting face turn for somebody on Fox News. Who knows if this case maybe had something to do with him changing his tune, thinking like, okay, these people are psycho. We're now <laughs> we're facing a $1.6 billion defamation lawsuit, so maybe I should reel it in a little bit. But of course, that's all speculation. I don't know why he's changed his mind a little bit recently, but he certainly is doing that. Hannity is set to be deposed on Wednesday, according to the New York Times, which first re which first reported on the court filing. Carlson is scheduled for Friday, and Lou Dobbs on Tuesday, according to court records. Dobbs' show was canceled in February 2021, and he was named with Fox News among the defendants in a separate defamation lawsuit filed by another election company, Smartmatic. So look, I don't know, since Dobbs is no longer with the company, I don't know if now he has to pay for his own lawyers, or if Fox News is still going to pay for it because he was under contract. I don't know, but look, my guess is Lou Dobbs was probably one of the worst offenders among all the offenders, because that dude is fucking psycho, and he's gone full Trump ball gargler mode. I mean, this guy, he, he loves caressing Trump's taint in front of the world. It is a very, very sad thing to see. So he probably was one of the chief proponents of these conspiracy theories. Dominion sued Fox News for $1.6 billion in March 2021 claiming that the network sold a false story of election fraud, arguing that the network amplified through its personalities and guests claims that Dominion rigged the results in favor of Joe Biden and against Donald Trump. Dominion claims that as Fox News lost viewers following the 2020 election to outlets that endorsed Trump's election lie, they sought to get viewers back by intentionally and falsely blaming Dominion for President Trump's loss by rigging the election. Now, that's interesting. My guess is since they're bringing this lawsuit, they have, you know, myriad evidence to this effect. But what I will say is th there's no way that Fox was as bad as One American News and Newsmax. Um, but, I mean, I'm sure they're going to bring a lot to the table here to show, hey, not only is this wrong, not only is this bad, it is actively malicious. What they're doing is malicious. They continue, in a statement, 
Fox News Media said, we are confident we will prevail as freedom of the press is foundational to our democracy and must be protected. In addition to the damages claims be in, in addition to the damages claims being outrageous, unsupported and not rooted in sound financial analysis, serving as nothing more than a flagrant attempt to deter our journalists from doing their job. Earlier this summer, the Delaware judge Eric M. Davis ruled that a separate Dominion case against Fox Corporation could move forward, raising the prospect that Rupert and Lachlan Murdoch will be deposed. Smartmatic sued Fox News, Dobbs, Piro, and Maria Bartiromo, as well as guests Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell in a $2.7 billion claim last year. The Smartmatic case also in the midst of discovery, and Smartmatic attorneys have recently been subpoenaed have been subpoenaing figures, including former Attorney General William Barr and Republican National Committee Chairwoman Ronna McDaniel, for documents related to their claim. Okay, so look, in terms of the specific claims that were made, they would argue, and I'm not joking about this, this is not an exaggeration, this is not hyperbole, they argued that, certainly on One American News Network and, and Newsmax, I don't know if Fox went this deep, but they argued that um, Venezuela and Maduro were rigging the vote count in real time to give the election to Joe Biden. There's a real argument that was made by people like Sidney Powell, too, for example. And here's the funny thing, too. Biden was pretty much is pretty much going to do what Trump's policy was against Venezuela. So there's literally no benefit to Maduro. So what would be the point of him even doing it? Even though it never happened either. That's the funny thing. Who at one point was providing legal <laughs> advice to President Trump. Just, 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 just totally psycho. Just out of their minds, right? These became mainstream arguments on the right. And you had, you know, on Facebook, they would have these these memes of just the most insane things you've ever heard of in regards to the election. And um, none of it was true. None of it was true. 60-plus court cases where Trump was trying to overturn certain states, he won none of them. I mean, he won some procedural cases, like one or two, but over 60 cases he lost. He lost them. The Arizona audit, they thought, oh, no, Trump really won Arizona, and this audit will prove it. Not only did Biden win, he won by more than he won by on Election Day. So he actually had a bigger lead than what we thought on Election Day. Um, you had every single insider in the Trump administration who had any ounce of uh, honesty and integrity in them were like, no, there's no evidence for any of this stuff that you guys are talking about, so you're going to lose, and it's, you're crazy. People like Michael Flynn and Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani were steering the ship and steering it right into a rock. And, um, you know, the crazies followed the other crazies off the cliff. It was the blind leading the blind. Now, again, Newsmax and One American News Network already have been sued, and there's already been some sort of settlement on that front. Now they're going after the big dog, Fox News. I don't know how this is going to unfold. Look, I do think it's a very high bar to clear when it comes to defamation. It needs to be, like, you need to not only say the wrong thing, but it needs to be malicious, and you might need to know that it's malicious. It's a, it's a weird standard, because you're talking about a company now versus, you know, an individual. There's one standard versus, like, private individuals versus public individuals. The, the public uh, individual bar, like a celebrity bar, is much higher for defamation. I don't know what it is for companies specifically, but I think they would have to prove, hey, not only did you say things that were wrong, it was malicious, and you knew it was wrong. So that might be hard to prove, but you never know. They might, just to save money, Fox might say, hey, look, we'll settle with you out of court. And maybe they'll throw them $200 million or $300 million or some shit. And that's if, um, you know, the companies accept that. But either way, I mean, to have these big name hosts being deposed, it's, it's a fascinating thing to see. And may, we might get it publicly at some point, which would be really interesting. Because remember, we had all the Alex Jones deposition, dep depositions publicly, and they were amazing to watch. My guess is that the Fox hosts will have their shit together a little bit better than Alex Jones did. Uh, but I'd still love to see it because I want to get a sense of who knew they were full of shit and lying and who actually believed it. Um, because the Fox hosts, you would think, are smart enough to, like, they know it's bullshit, but they ran with it anyway, which would maybe help the defamation argument more. That might, you know, cut in the direction of the companies. But, look, I guess we'll find out and see. But this is a, this is a big deal, and it also might be one of those things that the next time we're faced with a situation like this, you genuinely might have an order come from above that you better walk on eggshells and not say anything that's unproven because we don't want to get another $1.6 billion lawsuit. Because even if Fox News wins this lawsuit, just the legal fees to be in court in the first place are going to be exorbitant. And so they're not going to like that. So probably we'll see what ends up happening. But the end. fact of the matter is a lot of the claims yeah. were insane uh, and malicious. So I understand where they're coming from um, and... 
in terms of the results, it could cut either direction. We'll just have to wait and see. Hey, y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. So, and yeah, what do you guys say about that? Mm -hmm. What an alley. I mean, if it'd be a hell of a thing if it actually happened. Is that a... The, what would, um... Which actually would be. Where would um, Hannity and Carlson go? Hopefully not helping conservative causes. That's for damn sure. Like, look how yep. irrelevant Bill O'Reilly's been after he left. Yeah. And all the others. So, go away, make yourself weaker, and our side stronger. So, we'll have to see on yep. that possibly eventually. Because they... I mean, honestly, there's other things too you should go after Fox for too. Because they lie and lie and lie about every single thing that comes out of their mouth. Like, yeah. there are so many things you can go after him for. All right, mm -hmm. and now on to the final topic, and that's what you brought up. Yes, uh, because an Adelaide Holocaust Museum got targeted by neo-Nazis recently in my home city, Adelaide. Never and I actually didn't know there was a Holocaust Museum until this incident happened. Yeah, I wouldn't think there would be, and, I wouldn't think there'd be one down there either. Mm, so but anyway, there is, and I might actually go and take a look at it sometime now i know that it's there all right so yeah so so, so a so there was an image posted out the front of a group of about half a dozen people who hood and masks and hoods uh doing us doing the hitler salute out the front of it recently and um there was an anti-Semitic sticker stuck on there as well. So, uh, there's going to be a inquire, parliamentary committee inquiry into it. While initially I was like, uh oh, the One Nation MP that got in um, is being chaired. But then it's, um, and I've also found out that she seems to be one of the more moderate ones. Um, because she's one who's pushing out law, pushing to outlaw public displays of the swastika. So, oh no, there's to... a couple of um, as we're finally working to start um, outlawing certain ideological extremist groups, like mainly neo-Nazi groups. Ben... Well, considering that the guy that um, shot up the mosques in Christchurch was from Australia, um, yeah. So, so Victoria and New South Wales have already made a criminal offence to display neo-Nazi symbols in public, and Queensland's looking to ban the same imagery. That's like pushing free speech boundaries, like most of Europe has. Mm. Like I kind of understand, but like in there, it's um in that case, it's uh, public displays, not private. So that I can understand, even if I'm like, eh, not so sure. So but yeah. Um, the, that image was then um, captioned with why a Holocaust museum exists in Adelaide is anyone's guess, which is a pretty blatant statement about Holocaust denial. Yep. And when, now, let me to check the date this was posted so I can say, okay, 21 hours ago, so that was yesterday. So a couple of days ago was actually, if you remember, was the anniversary of the Nazi invasion of Poland. Yep. Pretty and good coincidental time in there. Mm, it probably on was actually um, on purpose. posted on the da that anniversary date. Yep. I and done so, that. ah, museum as Holocaust survivors share testimony with students about what can happen when race, hatred and racism takes over. Hey, always useful. Yep. So yeah, that's very surprising that there one would be a Holocaust museum down there of all places. Just like it would be weird for maybe one in America too. Most of them should probably honestly be more in Europe since that's where it happened at. Oh, that's where probably well, that's where most of them are. Yep. Probably are. Yep. So, but like, that's the thing though. It's so uh, there are we ha are getting a resurgence worldwide of far right groups. Whether it's neo-Nazis in much of the Western world, Islamic extremists in the Middle East and Africa, Christian extremists in other parts of Africa, like, for example, in the Central African Republic, where Christians and Muslims are trying to genocide each other. Um, the rise of Hindu nationalism in India, 
Buddhist nationalism in Myanmar and things like that. Yep. So, yeah, there's been more... Um, I've found an increase in my area of um, fascists playing around. Yeah, there's a very small amount of... So, yeah. Yep, it's very unfortunate. So, get anything else left to talk about this topic? I don't... Um, not really at the moment, but I think um, in the near future we could have a broader conversation about this sort of thing. Yep, but we already talked about so much over the years. Yeah. All right, so that is going to wrap up episode 57 here, guys. See you next time for episode 58.